Val. I am a sculptor and I love to make whimsical characters. Recently, I made this 10 out of 10 good boy. His name is Bipo. He is an artist and aspiring clown. Usually I make silent process videos, but this time I thought it would be fun to actually comment on the things that I did, learned, or had trouble with while creating this sculpture. Also, please stay tuned or even skip to the end if you'd like for a special announcement. But without further ado, let's get right into it. I don't always draw before starting a sculpture, mainly because I get really excited and just want to start sculpting my idea right away, but I wanted to be extra intentional with people's character design, so I took my time to think about his pose, outfit, and color palette. At this time, I was actually taking Jackie Drushko's Domestica character design course. This is not sponsored, I just hadn't taken any formal art classes other than classes at my high school, so I figured this short course would be a great way for me to identify where I can improve in my character designs. I learned so much about the importance of variation in curves and straight lines, different color values, lighting, and just how to make your characters more dynamic. I challenged myself to make a small lineup of three characters. I've always been very inspired by the vaudeville genre, anything that's circus theme early 20th century, so I wanted to pay homage to that era but put a modern twist to it and make characters that we can relate to today. Out of the three, my patrons wanted to see Pipo as a sculpture the most and secretly so did I, so I finished his drawing and moved on to sculpting. The first and most important step before sculpting with polymer clay is conditioning it, but it is by far my least favorite part. If you look very closely, you might see the puddle of tears that my pasta machine and I shed together while doing this. What I do enjoy is color mixing though, and seeing the colors come out exactly how I want them to is very satisfying and makes this process a bit more tolerable. This blue looks pretty close, but I think in real life it would look a little bit more cohesive if there was a tint of yellow in it. Even though I keep my clay in the drawer, sometimes when I pull it out, I'll still find specks of dust. So I have to spend an extra minute to just carve out the dust on the surface before I start mixing the colors together. The little bit of color contamination usually doesn't matter. Once you've conditioned the clay, you don't even notice it anymore. You might not be able to see it on camera, but I see it very clearly in real life that there's a slight green tint now to this blue, which is definitely the color that I'm going for. So little bits of adjustment in color makes a big difference in how cohesive your sculpture looks in the end. Once I mixed the colors I need, I began sculpting the largest shapes first, like the head and the body. I would then refine those shapes like adding smaller curves and tilts to mimic the character's pose that I sketched out and then added the details last. The most challenging part of Bipo for me was definitely his beret, specifically making the wrinkles and folds in the hat look organic, but I also didn't want to make it look so realistic and detailed that it deviates from the simplistic style of the rest of the character. Before people, most of my characters had cute little mitten hands. Like many artists, I fear hands, but I really felt like the energy in Bipo's pose came from his feet and traveled upwards towards his fingertips, if that makes sense. So he just had to have fingers, there was no avoiding it. And to my surprise, sculpting them was not too bad. I only went into fetal position maybe five times. 
I usually make the facial features when the character is nearing complete but not quite done yet. The reason is because there comes a point where I need a little bit of motivation to keep me going and adding the face brings the figure to life and makes me feel like there's an end to this piece. I don't do it too early because the facial features are delicate so if I have to handle the character a lot to get the other parts done then there's a higher risk of me messing up the face and having to redo it anyways. My favorite part is definitely putting together Beepo's outfit. That is usually my favorite part of building any of my characters. I especially loved creating his little ruffled collar and the trim around his legs. I felt like those parts really made him special. Up until this point, I was actually going to make Beepo into a trinket dish, similar to what I did for Berry Wise but with different props. Because he's an artist, I felt like part of his sculpture had to involve an artwork of some sort. His pose is supposed to be him, you know, celebrating and showing off a piece of artwork to you. But I thought like throwing a generic piece of art into the frame kind of limits the interaction or relatability that someone might have looking at it. So. I was like twirling around in my chair and looking at my surroundings and I looked over to the mirror that I have sitting on my computer desk and had my eureka moment. That's when I knew I had to put a mirror inside the frame so that someone looking at this can either see themselves or part of themselves like something in their surroundings that they feel connected to. This is an example of an instance where I don't always know until I start sculpting what I'm going to make the sculpture into. Like, is it going to be a standalone figure or is it going to be a dish or some other functional item? I might not have the idea yet when I'm sketching out the character, but I don't like to get too stuck in the brainstorming phase because I find working with my hands and seeing where the sculpture goes often kickstarts the inspo that I need. The mirror was inspired by those large, beautiful, antique gold frames and I got a lot of questions about how I made it. I indeed baked the mirror with the polymer clay together in the oven. Most mirrors are just made with glass and metal and both are safe to go into the oven at the low temperatures that polymer clay is baked at. I got mine on Amazon and just searched for crafting mirrors, but for your own safety, just make sure the mirrors that you're using aren't made with any additional materials or coatings that aren't safe for the oven. Now we need something to display the mirror with, and I thought about how artwork is displayed at a gallery or a vid. Usually it's on the wall, a fancy easel, or on a column of some sort. But I imagined Beepo to be traveling with his circus friends usually, so a wooden transportable easel felt more appropriate. I was going to construct a simple three-legged easel, but then I remembered that once polymer clay is baked and cured, it's actually quite flexible and can bend easily. So if I followed how a three-legged easel is built in real life, it won't be strong enough to hold up the mirror. I could have used metal armatures inside each leg and if you try this out I do recommend you do that but I didn't have any metal armatures on hand. I'm no engineer but I do know that triangles are very strong shapes that's why they're used in bridges, buildings and many IKEA projects. So what I did was make a few triangles out of polymer clay and incorporated them into the easel to make it stronger and now it's able to support the mirror frame. What made this process much easier was that I baked the separate pieces first before assembling them together with super glue. I kept the base quite simple because I didn't want it to draw attention away from the mirror and Beepo who are the main subjects in the sculpture. I used the same method that I used to make the Berry Wise dish by dividing a pink and white clay circle into 8 pieces and then attached them to one another by alternating the colors. It's supposed to remind you of the top of a circus tent. The piece is not complete without Beepo's tools, so I added a little paint palette and paint brushes to the side to finish the sculpture. Mm -hmm. 
Lastly, I attached each component to the base except for the mirror, which I wanted it to be removable. And voila, that is the complete sculpture. I hope it was fun to know a bit more about the story behind people and my process of creating this piece. If you stayed until now for the special announcement, here it is, and there's actually two parts to it. First is your girl is finally having a shop update. It's going to be happening on April 28th at 3 p.m. EST. It's going to include small figurines, earrings, keychains, trinket dishes, all that jazz, along with some clay stickers that were previously Patreon exclusives. If you're a patron in the $10 straw booty tier, you'll also get an extra 15% off the shop update and you can join any time before then to get this discount. Also, if you join before the end of April, you'll get this print and sticker in the mail of the latest character I created. Her name is Poppy and she is a little popcorn girl. The second announcement is that I am making new plushies. I know a few of you missed the straw booty plush, but I don't know if you guys actually want me to make her again. So it would really help me out if you can leave a comment to vote for your top two favorite plushie choices amongst these four options. And that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to support my channel. Thank you dearly to my patrons for everything. And I'll see you all very soon with a new sculpture. Bye!